everyone. For me, it's good morning. I'm on my way into the office. Just wanted to come in and talk to you for just a minute. Hopefully, you've seen my TikTok to lead you over to this uh, video. <clears throat> and I wanted to um, have a conversation in reference to the cerebral versus the narcissist and rape versus emotional rape. So I'm just going to let you know ahead of time, um, there's a trigger warning. Is a trigger warning. So if this is triggering you, please do not continue with the video. Uh, you can come back when you feel like you have the strength to listen to it. But I am letting you know ahead of time, um, trigger warning for those of you that have been violated, for those of you that have been hurt, molested, raped, uh, and you are still going through the trauma. Um, if you are not ready to listen to this video, please know it's a trigger alert. And I want you to make sure that you take care of yourself. Uh, make sure you go uh, maybe to betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Carmen, um, and you get a 10% discount for therapy and find a therapist to deal with your trauma. So just let you know ahead of time, putting a disclaimer out there, trigger alert for those of you that are not prepared to hear what I'm going to talk about. And so I wanted to talk about, first of all, let's talk about, and I did a little clip on um, TikTok, but I wanted to lead you, of course, you can't do a long, long, you know, part one through 85. So <clears throat> here we are on YouTube. <clears throat> so First of all, understand um, a cerebral narcissist versus a um, somatic narcissist. A cerebral narcissist, um, and, and before I say this, remember the story of Narcissus. Narcissus. I think it's the Greek mythological individual Narcissus. Go read the story. Uh, Narcissus fell in love with his image. And he, and he was cursed, but he fell in love with his image. So, you know, you know, he fell in love with himself uh, by seeing himself, you know, the image of himself in the water. He fell in love with himself, his image. So he would always stare at himself. No one can ever equate to himself. Well, that's a narcissist. And so the difference between the two narcissists is this, you know, they're different schools, different classes of narcissists. But we're going to talk about the cerebral and the somatic. And then we're going to talk about how they view sex and then um, rape versus emotional rape. So trigger warning. So the cerebral narcissist is totally uh, in love with themselves and their ability to think. They're intellectuals. So they are impressed with their intellectual capabilities, with their intelligence. No one is as, as, intelligent, as, as intelligent as they are. And they always have to, in their minds, they have to be around people that are of equal intelligence or more intelligent. It, it's intelligence is... Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it I'm looking for? College education or education, intelligence, you know, the, the, the capability of out, out thinking people uh, or the possibility of out thinking people. But some of them are very intellectual. Some of them are very intellectual. Some of them are very uh, um, educated um, and some of them may be attractive, but they're more into their own intellect. They're in love with the thought that they are so intelligent. So these are the ones that feel like they can only be around a specific group of people. And they are appalled when they talk to people that they think uh, is not of equal uh, intelligent as they are. And of course, no one is more intelligent than they are in the first place, but they are impressed with their intelligence. Somatic, soma, the Greek word for, um, I think it's a Greek word, the Greek word for body. The somatic narcissist is impressed with the way that they appear, their appearance. They're impressed with their own body. Um, you see it a lot now on social media. Now, there's a difference between those people that are trainers that are showing you um, exercises or models that, you know, they're paid for their appearances and their beauty. Uh, it is in the beauty industry. I'll let you know that ahead of time. Or trainers that are showing you, um, you know, um, the effects of their exercises or things, you know, how your body can look, you know, but then there are some you can see them, you know, when you're watching on social media, they are totally just enamored. I think that's the right word with their own appearance um, when they're doing videos and when they're showing you their body. They're so impressed with their body, but then they try to make you feel guilty that you're jealous over them. And it's not the fact that you're jealous over them is that they're more impressed with their body than you are. Uh, you know, they're more in love with their body than you are. They're, they're really, you can see them in the cameras. You can see them. They're so impressed with themselves. Now, some of them are very attractive. Some of them look like that garden gnome. You know, they look like that, that pencil topper, that troll that you swing real quick and got that purple hair. Yeah. Um, and some of them are really gorgeous, but they're so impressed with themselves and they expect everyone to be just as impressed as they are with themselves. And if you are not impressed with them at their beauty and how beautiful they are, or, you know, with that cerebral, with their in intellect, their intelligence, then they are appalled. Something is wrong with you. You're jealous. You're a hater. And they spend a lot of time about how 
determine how much people hate them because you know I'm just beautiful I'm confident within myself no they're arrogant and a lot of them are narcissistic either narcissistic meaning they have very strong narcissistic traits or actually have narcissistic personality disorder so this is the two different so I wanted to say that to tell you that a cerebral narcissist is not really impressed with sex. They're not really into sex. Um, a lot of those, and, and both of them, really, a lot of them are more into, um, uh, into uh, how do we say it to make it appropriate for YouTube? They're more into self-pleasuring. Uh, the appropriate word, uh, the medical term or the psychological term is called masturbation. Uh, but we'll just use self-pleasuring uh, for the purpose of the um, video. Uh, but a lot of them are more into pornography and self-pleasuring themselves. And those of you um you who may know may not know who are in the mental health field medical field you know that the more you self-pleasure yourself and the more you are into pornography the less people can do for you meaning that 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 person knows or that narcissist knows more about themselves and how to pleasure themselves and, and are impressed with their own self and and for and you most people like do they get any pleasure out of it they pleasure themselves to get relief or they pleasure themselves they are more impressed with themselves pleasuring themselves however when it comes the actual having interaction with another person they're not impressed with with the person that they're having uh sexual relationships because they're more impressed with themselves you can't do it the way that they can do it and the more you you know more of that narcissist is into pornography and more into the more delusional they are because of the fact that it's hard uh to to have sex with another person they're not impressed with the other person because they can't do it the way that they can do it uh likewise for the somatic narcissist for a somatic narcissist on the other hand they you know e each narcissist Narcissist weaponizes sex and for that somatic narcissist they already think that they are the porn king and queen of the world of the earth you know and so they are so impressed with themselves they are their own porn stars and so um, they use sex and they use their appearance to get what they want remember that song you got to use what you got to get what you want uh, which is wrong but uh, that's how they 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 see it they use sex to get what they want they use sexuality to get what they want they both narcissists weaponize uh, sex um, now you have uh, not only do they weaponize sex now they also understand like for a cerebral they understand they can use sex to pull in someone to lock them in but eventually you'll notice that they're not really into sex they don't really have sex and they don't mind punishing you without giving you sex but they're not really impressed with having sex with you now they will you know and some of you get angry I don't understand you know you are self-pleasuring yourself or you're always into pornography and here you have the real thing you know you have the real thing you can use and some of you are trying to you know but you have to understand the disorder you have to understand the individual that you're dealing with that and the disorder uh, but they do weaponize sex and a cerebral narcissist understands that I can lock someone in in order to get you. I can have sex with you and lock you in. And then, um, it, you know, once you're locked in and I got you at that height, you know, I don't really have to have sex with you or anything like that. I'll do it every now and then just to take you through that emotional roller coaster and trauma bond you. But I'm not really into sex like that. And a lot of you like is I just don't understand. A somatic narcissist um, is into sex, but they weaponize that sex. They understand that um, that sex can change people people's minds you know good sex uh, or sex in general can change your mind it can change the way that you're thinking it can it can force you you know it can, it can inf not force you but they will use it to try to change your mind it's a matter of power and control they use their sexuality to get what they want everything is selfish nothing is about you you having sex with them and they're more you notice they have mirrors or they're recording because they're not looking at you they're not looking at the act they're looking at themselves perform you know some of you say it's the best sex I've ever had well they understand understand you know do they get pleasure out of it they get more pleasure out of you getting pleasure out of what they're doing to you but they're not getting pleasure it's a relief I had a narcissist tell me you know what do you know that the worst sex that you can have is good and I was like man that's arrogant the worst sex that you can have is good and so really they that to them is just a release a release you know, and we know that sex is, is, is a way that two people bond with each other. That oxytocin is released. We've got to be careful. You can't just out there having sex with just anybody because you think you're not bonding with them. You know, you're think you know, but yes, there's oxytocin being released, you know. Now for a narcissist, they're not going to bond with you. You know, they use that. They understand that you get bonded to them, but they're not. But that's why like some uh, somatic narcissists have other sources of supply. They're never going to allow you to just to lock them in. Yeah, you know, you're not going to lock them in to 
abusive relationship. You're not going to lock them into their mind. You're not going to lock them into their heart. Uh, but they use sex for the purpose of um, um, power and control. That's what it is, power and control. Um, they're not really impressed with you. When they're staring at you and, and you know, you're having sexual and, and, and it's really good to you. Really, it's a mind thing too, you know, because you can talk yourself, you can hype yourself up so so much that it just is pleasurable. Later on in years, you're like, it's garbage. It always has been. It was me. I pumped myself up. And then some of you guys, it's the best sex that you've ever had. And then for some of you guys, it, it was garbage. It was a waste of my time. I can't believe I did this. You know, so there are different experiences, you know, because they do get experienced because they, they get around. They get around. They get around. It's a song. Okay. Anyway, but they get around. And so uh, now let's, let's go into rape. Uh, trigger alert. Trigger warning. Trigger alert. So understand rape is not about sex. Rape is about power and control. A person totally violates another person's right to say no and violates their bodies through sexual intercourse or touching or fondling. But rape is a total violation of another person's right to say no and a total violation, uh, a, a very traumatic violation of another person's um, a right, uh, their bodies and, and forceful sex. Um, rape is a crime of um, of power and control it has it is it, it even though it involves sex it's not about sex it's about being able to control another person um emotional rape likewise is a person being violated in their highest level which is like love their highest level of emotions love and they're violated and traumatized that's where trauma bonding comes in because you fall in love with an individual that has violated you mentally emotional um uh rape it's that stockholm syndrome where the person falls in love with their um abuser violator their captor and it's because those emotions are up and down and you have so much fear in you that you tend to, and this is Stockholm Syndrome, you tend to um, uh, comply and have compassion for the person that is abusing you and you're traumatically bonded with them where you even fight for them because you've been traumatized and you're willing to do anything to save yourself and to save your life and but you know sex is involved but sex is not about and this is the rape part but the emotional uh, rape is where a person totally strips you of your rights you know they it's, it's like they force you to be in love with them and they do it systematically narcissists do it systematically they don't just start at a high height they do it systematically and they do it systematically in the term is called love bombing they they and this everything that they um uh, they trick you into every way that they manipulate you into it is a trick it is a uh i don't know if it's a ruse but it's a trick it is a manipulation tactic it is is power and control to force you to fall in love with them it's really to lock you in so they can have power and control. And sex is involved because sex is it's almost like is the hook that bonds you to that individual. And so emotional rape, you, they're raping you of your right to pick and choose who you want to love is forced on you. It is forced. It is a violation. And remember, so rape and emotional rape, it, it, rape, it is a it is a crime of power and control in order to control another person. And so, uh, like I said, you're dealing with the cerebral, you're dealing with the somatic. They don't see sex the same way that you see sex. They, they you know, they don't see, um, um, you know, you see it as bonding and, and close, you know, bond and relationship and consummation of our love. They don't see it like that. They see it as control and you know, the more sex I give you, the more control I have over you. I can look in your face and they, and you thinking they're looking at it. It's that narcissistic stare. And we're going to get to that too. This is that narcissistic stare where they're staring at you. You think they're staring into your eyes and, and it's so pleasurable. They're looking at you. They're like an android. So they need to know what kind of sounds you're making. Ooh, ah, you know, what kind of sounds you're making? What kind of facial expressions are you making? What are you doing? What is your body doing and everything? So they're studying you to see how to react. Not to respond because a response comes, you know, you, a response is something that you can think about. You know, you're responding, but your reactions. So they're looking at your reactions. You know, that's that immediate reaction right then. You know, that's pretty honest. You know, you're reacting. Uh, that's why I tell you guys, wait 12 to 24 hours to respond to any email because the first thing you're going to do is going to give a reaction. Well, 
They're looking at your reactions to the act of sex so they can pick up on how they're supposed to act. What is my facial expression supposed to look like? You know, how do you ooh and ah? How do you move your body around? What is it, you know, when, when you're talking back and forth during the act, you know, what is it that you're saying? How do I know that... I've hit the spot. You know, how do I know that that is gratifying? So now they're learning. You're teaching them so that they can um, go to other people and they continue to it, remember they, they're not growing. They're not learning for the positive. What they're doing is evolving. And so they need to, they're like an Android. They're collecting data while they're watching you. You're looking at them. They just stare in my eyes and it's so sexy how they just look at me and, and you can just tell the, the want in their eyes. Child, they are collecting data. That's what they're doing. You know, yes, you're in the moment and it's all beautiful and you huffing and puffing and climaxing and whatever you're doing, but they're collecting data. They're seeing what you're doing so they can replicate that with the next supply, whoever they get with. They replicate whatever they're doing that's making you react like that. That is, and they do that with anything. It, it doesn't even have to be sex. They look to see how you react and then they'll keep doing that very thing. You know, it's, it's that conditioning. They do that very thing to get that same reaction again from other people. And if that doesn't work, they have to go and look to see how do I do something different to make another, you know, a, a different response or a different reaction. And so, child, while you think that they're staring in your eyes and you super sexy and they're all into you, they're collecting data. They're looking, they're collecting to see, you know, what what are you doing? How are you doing this? What do you sound like? What is your body doing? How, how are you, you know? So, for those of you that weren't ready for a grown folk conversation, I'm sorry. Click off. Make sure your kids ain't listening, ain't listening to this uh, because this was a serious subject and, and I know there's probably some triggers and some of you um, may have been triggered in the conversation, but I'm telling you, go to betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Carmen and they will provide you with a 10% discount in therapy services. You can find people that specialize in sex, sexual assault, um, sex therapists. You can ask about trauma professionals, people, you know, if you have been traumatized, but they'll give you a 10% discount. You've having any problems any any uh, problems with finances let them know and they're willing to work with you to get you help it's a nominal fee it, it is not that expensive i'm really i always say i'm really impressed because you know the prices that we have to charge um our client in order to keep our office doors open you know in order to pay our bills uh but they there's a very nominal fee and phenomenal therapists that are there that understand trauma and so i want you to go some of you guys need healing but now you know you know what they're thoughts are when it comes to sex, when it comes to uh, emotional rape and rape and cerebral narcissists versus somatic narcissists. And so there you have it. So thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. You guys stay tuned. Um, I'm getting ready to meet with my team this week in reference to uh, my July Overcoming Narcissist Abuse Conference. The conference will be on the 23rd. I think it's the 23rd. 22nd is a Friday of July and the 23rd is that Saturday. So that Saturday we are having a conference. And those of you that are in the Atlanta area or if you are close by, you know, I want you to come. I'm going to make sure I speak to the hotel. It's going to be over at the Marriott Marquis. Uh, and I think it's on Peachtree in Atlanta. And so those of you that are wanting to fly in, go ahead and get your ticket. Um, you know, if you want a hotel room, just give me a minute so I can get them, uh, so I can get them to do the block room so you can get discounted rates like we did in Dallas. But I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. We're going to have the conference. It's going to be, I'm trying to do it from eight to five because along with me, I'm going to have um, Helen Sadler, your destiny helper, Telsha, helper, um, Telsha with the T on MPD said that she's going to be there with us. Uh, Pastor Marcus Monroe from New York, he said he's going to be there. Ms. Bridget Griffin says she's going to be there. And so we're going to have all these speakers. And then um, before we end the conference, um, those of you that follow um, Helen Sadler, your destiny helper um, on uh, Clubhouse, uh, she usually has um, a table talk. So we're going to have a table talk with all these individuals um, that are not in the conference themselves, like Telsha, uh, myself, um, Pastor Marcus Moreau is going to be there. Bridget is going to be there. Um, uh, hopefully, Miss Tasha from Atlanta will be there. Um, so we can sit up on the table. You can We can have a conversation like we do on Clubhouse, and you can ask questions. We're also going to be serving lunch. Um, we're going to have lunch. You're going to be paying for lunch. And those of you that would like to join all of us in the evening for VIP, there will be a VIP. If you cannot attend in person, which I hope you can, I would love to meet you guys 
If you cannot attend in person, I will also be doing a Zoom. And so the Zoom uh, from 8 to 5, um, and just let me get the times locked in, okay? Let me meet with my team so I can get this out and start it. Uh, but I, um, from 8 to 5, you will be on the Zoom with us, so you'll be able to interact with us. You will see us. Uh, some of you can't travel. That's fine. But those of you that can travel, please come out. I have family in Atlanta. I'm hoping my family is going to be out. Uh, I'm going to contact them because i got a big old family in Atlanta. So hopefully they'll be able to come. Um, and and join us uh, for this conference. Um, also in August, from the um, 11th through the 16th, um, I will be in Hawaii with Apostle Helen Sadler. Um, I'm a part of her team. We're going to be over there uh, for a three-day conference. The conference will be on the 12th, 13th, and the 14th. The 15th, we're taking a trip around the island, and the 16th, we're leaving. And so we will be in Hawaii for a three-day conference as well. For those of you that want to go, just stay tuned for both of these informations to be put out to you so that you can register. You have information to register, and you have information for me to register for the conference. Uh, for those of you um, that want to register now and get it out the way so that you can prepare for your flight or your travel to Atlanta. I'm hoping to see you guys. I'm really excited about it. It was beautiful last year. I know it's going to be great this year and it was great. People love to laugh and smile. It's going to be great. I am looking forward to this, this travel this year. And so I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. So you guys have a beautiful day. I want you guys to go and be great, honey. And make sure you also sign up or go over there and subscribe to my TikTok. I think it's under Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. You you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, I'm on Twitter, or like I used to say, I'm on Twitter at Dr. Carmen Bryant One. I'm on Instagram, overcoming narcissist abuse. There should be no excuse why you cannot um, you know, see the videos that I upload. Those of you know that I am in the state of Washington. If you have uh, are you in the state of Washington, you have insurance, contact me at Dr. Carmen Bryant at Outlook.com if I have availability. I'll check to see if I am in your network. If not, if you are out of state, I do provide coaching services. Same email at Dr. Carmen Bryant uh, at Outlook. I mean, not at, but Dr. Carmen Bryant at Outlook.com. And um, I will provide you with my fees for services. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Check out TikTok because I'm always over there on TikTok. I got, I got, uh, I got jokes too. So you guys have a beautiful day.